you know, he picked the wrong family and uh, not scared of a conflict and we're not scared, we're not running, we're coming at him. My name is Major Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens, Deputy Commissioner of Operations with Pennsylvania State Police. Uh, with me is Major D'Ambrosio over to my right, uh, the area commander uh, for this area of the Pennsylvania State Police. Uh, also, I'm joined by District Attorney Deb Ryan and also Rob Clark from the U.S. Marshal's Office. As you know, on the morning of Thursday, August 31st, inmate uh, Danello Cavalcante escaped from the Chester County Prison. The investigation into the escape is ongoing and is being conducted jointly by the Chester County District Attorney's Office and the Pennsylvania State Police. After the escape was detected at approximately 10 o'clock that morning, a county employee reported seeing an individual matching the description of Cavalcante south of the prison and near Route 52. Numerous law enforcement agencies searched that area but could not locate Cavalcante. The escape investigation and search was originally coordinated by the Chester County District Attorney's Office with assistance from the Pennsylvania State Police and numerous other local, state, and federal agencies. With much of the effort now focused in PSP primary coverage area, District Attorney Ryan has requested PSP to take a leading role in this investigation. We have agreed to do that and, of course, continue to work closely with the District Attorney's Office as we move forward. We continue to bring more technology and personnel to bear on this situation. Since the day of the escape, there have been several credible sightings within an area bordered by the intersection of Route 926 and 52, north on 52 to Parkersville Road, southeast to 926, and west to the intersection of 926 and 52 in Pocopson Township. In total, there have been four sightings within that boundary. The most recent credible sighting occurred yesterday afternoon, also within that bordered area. We have secured that area and continue to actively search it. While there are a number of challenges, we are confident that if he is in there, we will find him. We are asking for the public's help in a number of ways. First, familiarize themselves with the photograph and description of Cavalcante. There is every reason to believe he remains in this area. Second, within the secured area I have described, as well as near there, we are ask, asking residents to check on their neighbors. If they're not at home, please let us know so we can check their property in their absence. We know that we have numerous homes within the search area in which we presume the occupants are away for the holiday weekend. We have been checking the exteriors of many of those homes, but as they return, if they find anything disturbed, please stop and call us so that we can check it out prior to them going through the residence. Third, please check your home security cameras and call us with anything suspicious you might observe. There's been a tip line established and we can be re reached at 717-562-2987. 717-562-2987. All tips, of course, will be fully investigated. We also remind everyone that a reward totaling up to $10,000 has been offered for information leading to the capture of Danilo Cavalcante. I wanted to say a couple of things to the community as well, if I could. First, you may be hearing a message uh, that's being broadcast from a helicopter or from 
cars in the vicinity of that perimeter that I talked about. One of the things that we have done is we've had the, the um, individual's mother uh, make a recording asking him to surrender peacefully. Uh, it's, it's done in Spanish or actually Portuguese and, uh, and it's being broadcast in an effort to uh, facilitate his peaceful surrender. Secondly, we're also asking the community to avoid that uh, the wooded area or anything outside of the immediate uh, area around their homes in that perimeter that I described. Uh, as I said, we're actively searching that area. We're certainly not uh, trying to lock anyone down, but we want to keep residents as safe as possible while we uh, thoroughly search that area. So again, we ask them to refrain from, from that area. And I'd also like to thank the community for their support. You know, this has gone on for a couple of days now. Uh, I know it's stressful for the community, but I want to assure you that all of us up here and our respective offices are working diligently to bring this to a conclusion as quickly as possible. Please know we are devoting all available resources. We're constantly identifying additional needs. We're making sure we bring those in um, and, and we will resolve this as quickly as possible and as safely as possible. With that said, um, we'll be happy to take questions if, if any of you have any. Mr. President, the most recent sighting um, can you just describe a little bit about what he looked like? Have you changed his appearance at all, or and what was the nature of that sighting? The appearance was uh, very similar to what we've described, um, perhaps uh, looking a little more worn and tired, but uh, a very brief sighting, and it was uh, a trooper, actually, that observed him uh, in some distance, uh, gave chase, but was unable, uh, because of the terrain and some, some other obstacles there, was unable to get to him before he disappeared. Where did he run off to? Uh, it was all within that perimeter area, but uh, I, I don't want to be any more specific than that. Can you elaborate on what makes it a, a credible sighting? Is it all visual? Or are there video components to any of it? Uh, one was a video sighting that I believe you have all seen. Uh, we've analyzed that video. Uh, the others are not video, uh, but uh, after extensive interviews, uh, we believe them to be credible sightings. Do you have any reason to believe that he's being assisted by anyone out there at this point? I wouldn't want to comment at this point. Point. Uh, we, we'll of course explore all avenues, and that's all we look for. But uh, but I wouldn't want to go into anything more right now. Can you confirm he broke into the house? I'm sorry. Can you confirm that he broke into the house? We can confirm that we have investigated um, actually two burglaries. Uh, the evidence is still under analysis at this point, and so I can't confirm that it was him. But uh, they are of interest to us. So is that why you're talking? Well, not only because of those two instances, but we know that um, that he is going to be looking for a means to sustain himself. He's going to need clothing. He's going to need uh, food uh, and, and just to get in out of the weather. It's pretty hot out there. Uh, I'm sure he's looking for some some better shelter. So uh, for a lot of reasons, we would be concerned about where he might hide. Did you dispatch any of your troopers to water line drives where one of those uh, that's that's within the uh, search area and yes we have investigated a number of things within that search area i don't want to get any more specific than, than that in five days, so he needs to in some Well, from experience, there are a lot of things that we'll consider, but certainly um, you have to keep in mind, he's stressed right now. Imagine any one of you uh, being placed in a situation where uh, you may not have had a chance to pack. Uh, you don't have things with you other than what you're wearing and you don't have uh, cash. You don't have a credit card. Uh, you don't have any other means to support yourself. You're going to be desperate. And, and that's the situation he's in. But it's also why... Uh, one of our uh, practices in how we conduct uh, these types of uh, investigations and manhunts is that we'll continue to push him hard. I intend to stress him. I want to push him hard. He'll make mistakes. He'll show himself. He's already shown himself, we believe, a few times. We'll contain him and we will eventually catch him. Uh, we will do it as quickly as possible. Obviously, it takes time, 
He is desperate. He does not want to be caught. He has very little to lose at this point. So I'm going to defer to the school districts to, to uh, communicate that information out. I can tell you that uh, we have been in touch with the State Department of Education, uh, having discussions about this, and uh, and and also uh, the district attorney has been in touch with uh, several of the local superintendents. We're going to have another discussion later this afternoon. Ultimately, uh, the decision rests with the school districts. Uh, we can provide them. Uh, sort of the latest picture of what's going on in their areas, and then we ask them to make that decision and and communicate that out to the parents. Have you this is the for Deborah, right? Yes. Elaborate a little bit more on that. If he is not actively surrendering, deadly force is authorized. This is for Deb Ryan. Have you completed your investigation into the prison break at this point, or are you still? Mike, our, our goal right now is to find this man and capture him. So we are, are channeling all of our efforts to bring him into custody. That is secondary. That is certainly a concern. But at this point, all manpower has been executed to, to find and hunt down this fugitive. But it's been five days. How can you not explain how he escaped? As I indicated, our focus right now is to capture this fugitive. He's a dangerous person. We will be able to update our investigation with respect to what happened at the prison at a later date. Right. Well, I mean, the, obviously the question is like, could other people also escape? I mean, is there something, you know, at issue with the prison where somebody else could pull this off? They have been looking into what happened and they are investigating what happened. I'm not at liberty at this point to share with the public what is going on with respect to that investigation. The prison is, is very aware of whatever vulnerabilities they had, and they have made efforts to correct those vulnerabilities. Clarify, do you know how he escaped, but you're just not saying, or you just don't know yet? As I indicated, we are working on the investigation with respect to the escape, but our main focus right now is to capture this fugitive. So could you confirm Friday that there was another escape two months prior to this? So yes, there was. That's correct. I believe it was in May of this year. Okay, so that's not too much. Well, we interviewed a neighbor who said that he was in his shed. That's how he was escaped a couple weeks ago. I think we're talking about the same suspect. Okay. Yeah. Does this guy seem like he had a plan at all? Or was this a, I mean, it doesn't seem like he knew where to go. At, at this time, we don't know, Mike, um, and we're conducting that investigation currently. Can you elaborate on talking to the superintendent? Because we've talked at all about so many neighbors, right, who are, as a psychic, I don't use the word, just so upset, yeah. right? Can you talk to them about, you know, they're saying they're not getting a lot of communication. They don't know what to do. They are having guns by their side, like literally so upset. Can you just talk to them about what is going on and, and how they can kind of lay their fears? Absolutely. And our main concern is with the residents in this community. Of course, we want to make sure that they, they are um, protected and kept safe. We have been in communication with the superintendents. We have been sending out reverse 911 calls to the residents in a two mile perimeter. So they're getting updates that the rest of the community outside of that area are not getting. Um, so we're making every effort to be in touch with them. Regarding the schools and how we wanna operate moving forward, we have a call this afternoon to talk that out with the superintendents. But like Colonel Bivens indicated, it's gonna be a decision that the school districts have to make on their own but we're going to provide them with all the information that they need to make an educated decision on that. What would you like to say to the neighbors, though? They're scared. I understand that, and, and I I want to say that we are doing everything in our power to get this guy, and people are working around the clock. I understand, I understand their fears, um, but we are doing everything. We are bringing in all the experts in this area. We have the top men and women working around the clock to bring this man to justice, and we're not going to stop until he's captured. And we hope we're getting closer. And if I could, if I could just jump back in here. Thank you. Um, with regard to the neighbors or the people in this area, I want to assure them that we have a strong presence there. They are not on their own out there. Um, we have people close by. If they hear or see anything, call us. We will be happy to come check it out. They don't need to go outside and check out a suspicious noise or if they hear something in their homes, we'll take care of it right away. We're close by. It's not going to take long at all to have somebody there. So we're happy to do that. Uh, and, and again, 
please know that we are doing everything we uh, we ask for their indulgence uh, of the heavy police presence. But that's that's one of the ways that we can, uh, as best possible, assure their safety. No, we're not. We're not asking people to do that. There's been no indication that um, that he poses that kind of a threat to uh, anyone in those neighborhoods. He doesn't want to be caught. He doesn't want to go back. Now, could he be desperate and do something? Sure, but um, but we don't have information to suggest that anyone is at risk for going out in their yard. What we're saying is to avoid interfering with the search. You know, avoid those wooded areas. And again, that's a, a fairly small area. Maybe. Uh, a mile, mile and a half uh, across. The rest of the area, we're not even asking people to avoid the woods. It's within that perimeter area that we've set up that we're just asking for those, uh, uh, not even restrictions, some cooperation to make our jobs a little bit easier. There's always <clears> that two mile radius from the Chester County Prison, this whole area that's on lockdown. Yes. And then people, again, yeah, the use of deadly force, is this shoot to kill on site or if he doesn't act as a well, it, it, the term is not shoot to kill. It's deadly force is authorized, and it's if he is not actively surrendering. We do consider him to be a very dangerous individual. He is convicted of homicide here. Uh, was involved in an, uh, I'm told in another homicide in uh, Brazil uh, some years ago. Um, it's somebody that we think uh, poses a threat and needs to be taken out of the community. Needs to be incarcerated. He has the option to surrender. That is what we hope he will do. Will he be returned to the Chester County Prison if he's apprehended? We'll discuss that at, uh, at, at that point in time. But what I would tell you is that uh, I can assure you that uh, there will be secure measures put in place that he won't be escaping again. Um, and so whether that's at another facility, that's something that uh, we'll be discussing with the district attorney and also uh, with the State Department of Corrections. Are the troopers going home to home searching with Sophia? They have been. And so, again, we ask their cooperation. Uh, so you may see a trooper in that area um, or somewhere close by uh, uh, knock at your door and and ask some questions or ask if they can come in. Uh, and again, it's it's simply that they're trying to make sure that we have thoroughly searched that entire area, and that residents' homes are secure. Can you give some ideas, Marshall, in terms of what your role is right now? Sure. Um, I think Lieutenant Colonel Bivens uh, summarized everything perfectly. Our role is to support the Pennsylvania State Police. They are the lead investigator uh, in this investigation, and they come with much experience of these woods and manhunts. We've had numerous, numerous manhunts. I think the most recent was in Warren County um, just a couple months ago. So we're bringing the best of the best assets out here. Um, their CERT team, their special emergency response team, is well trained. They're here. Um, our professionals from the Marshal Service are here as well. And our position is that Danilo Cavalcanti's um, desperateness will not outlast the resolve of our investigators here. And that goes for the state police, that goes for the Marshal Service, our state and county local investigators. We're all on the same team. And uh, like the Lieutenant Colonel said, we will get him, we'll push the threat, he'll make a mistake, and we'll bring him into custody. So outside that two mile radius, can you remind what you've done in the times? Long with Barton was open, uh, the Metro Westchester University made a decision that people outside the two mile radius will not be as concerned. But what, what do you say to people outside that two mile radius? I don't think we're there yet. Uh, like the Lieutenant Colonel said, our efforts are focused on that mile and a half to two mile radius uh, and inside that inner perimeter. There's been four confirmed sightings. So we're not uh, ready to sound the alarm outside of that radius yet. All of our efforts are focused inside, and until we exhaust that or we prove that he's escaped that two mile radius, then we can talk about maybe 